Migraine headaches, how to treat and prevent them, part 2b, acute treatment of migraines, G pants, and ditans. Hi again everybody. In our last installment, part 2a, we discussed the drug classes used in the acute treatment of migraines. These were the OTCs, triptans, and ergots. Now we will move on and talk about the newer drug classes that have been recently approved for the acute treatment of migraines, the G-Pants and Ditans. The G-Pants, a new class of migraine drugs. Remegipant, or Nurtec, is a member of the G-Pant class of migraine drugs. You've probably already seen some of the recent celebrity endorsements on TV and on social media. Lady Gaga, Whoopi Goldberg, and Khloe Kardashian, all commending the use of Nurtec. And Serena Williams supports the use of a different G-Pant, Ubro G-Pant, or Ubral-V. Here are the main points about the G-Pants. The G-Pants are a new group of drugs called small molecule oral calcitonin gene-related peptide, or CGRP, receptor antagonists. They are available for the acute treatment of migraine. G-Pant drugs block CGRP directly at its receptor site. CGRP is a key neuropeptide and potent vasodilator that is central to migraine pathophysiology. Let's review the mechanism of action of G-Pants. During a migraine attack, activation of trigeminal neurons triggers the release of vasoactive and inflammatory neuropeptides into the brain's nerves and blood vessels. Calcitonin gene-related peptide or CGRP, is the main neuropeptide secreted from these nerve endings. CGRP is responsible for causing arterial vasodilation in cerebral blood vessels and inducing inflammation of the meninges, contributing to the emergence of migraine pain. The class of GPAN drugs blocks CGRP at its receptor, thus inhibiting vasodilation, neurogenic inflammation, and migraine pain. This new class of therapeutic agents allows an unprecedented targeted therapeutic approach to migraine. Here is a simple diagram that illustrates the migraine process. First, a nerve impulse in the trigeminal nerve ending in light green causes the release of CGRP neuropeptides into the nerve synapse. CGRP then binds to the receptors on smooth muscle cells located in the cranial blood vessels in the cerebral artery and in the meninges. Activation of CGRP receptors results in vasodilation, inflammation, and pain occurring, leading to the migraine. G-pants, in the yellow colored rectangle, bind directly to the CGRP receptor sites, blocking the effect of CGRP neurotransmitters. So despite the release of CGRP from nerve endings, the G-pants occupy and block the binding of CGRP to its receptor. There are two oral G-pants currently on the market, Rima G-pant or Nurtec and Ubro G-pant or Ubralvi. Both have an onset of 60 minutes. The dose of Nurtec is 75 milligrams with a maximum daily dose of 75 milligrams. The dose of Ubralvi is 50 or 100 milligrams, which can be repeated after two hours with a maximum daily dose of 200 milligrams. A third G-Pant, which is a nasal spray, was approved in 2023 and added to the list. It's called Zavigipant or Zavspret. It has an onset of 15 minutes, which is quicker than the oral G-Pants. The dose is one spray intranasally in one nostril, with a maximum daily dose of one spray. What is the efficacy of these new G-Pant drugs? G-Pants seem to be less effective than triptans. In clinical studies, about 20% of patients are free from migraine pain at two hours with G-Pants. 
This compares to 30% with triptans. Adverse effects of the G pants include dry mouth, nausea, dyspepsia, and somnolence. Drug interactions. CYP3A4 inhibitors or inducers that are strong or PGP inhibitors should not be taken concurrently with Rimagipant or Ubrogipant since they are both substrates of CYP3A4 and PGP. So what are some of the advantages of using G-Pants? G-Pants do not cause direct vasoconstriction, so they can be used as a first-line anti-migraine treatment for those patients with documented cardiovascular disease. They can be used as a second-line treatment where treatment with triptans have failed, and they appear not to cause medication overuse headache. Let's go in depth with more information on the nasal G-Pant product, Zavigipant or Zavspret. It's the first nasal spray formulation of a calcitonin gene-related peptide or CGRP receptor antagonist or G-Pant. It was approved in March of 2023. The onset of intranasal Zavigipant brings migraine pain relief within 15 minutes to two hours after using a single dose and can continue to work for up to 48 hours. In comparison, oral G-Pants take about 60 minutes to start working. It can also improve other symptoms related to migraine, such as nausea and sensitivity to light and sound. Common side effects include a change in sense of taste discusia and agusia, nasal discomfort, and throat irritation. Do not use with intranasal decongestants as they can decrease Zavigipant's absorption. It's applied in cartons containing six single-dose disposable devices. The retail cost for a package of six single-dose nasal spray applicators of Zavspret without insurance coverage or coupons runs about $1,100. Eligible commercially insured patients can participate in the manufacturer's copay card program. To stay updated with each installment of the PharmEasy Tutor, make sure to subscribe to this channel. It's easy. Just click on the black subscribe button below to change it to the word subscribed. Then, to get notified whenever a new video comes out, Click the down arrow and then select all. Also, if you like videos such as this, please take a moment to click on the thumbs up icon below to change the color to black. Thanks for your help with this. Now let's talk about the Ditans. Here are some main points about the Ditans. Lasmiditan or Rayvow is the first of a new class of migraine drugs called Ditans. It's an oral tablet approved by the FDA in 2020 for the treatment of acute migraine with or without aura. Lasmiditan is a serotonin 5-HT1F receptor agonist. It is unlike the triptans, which agonize the 5-HT1B and 1D receptors. It's available as a 50 or 100 milligram tablet and it is a federally scheduled C5 controlled substance. Mechanism of action of the ditans. Lasmiditan is a selective serotonin 5-HT1F receptor agonist. Lasmiditan binds to 5-HT1F receptors and inhibits the release of pain-provoking neuropeptides, CGRP and substance P, from the presynaptic membrane of the trigeminal system. Here's a diagram of where lasmiditan works, specifically at the 5-HT1F receptors. When activated, the release of neuropeptides is inhibited. Lasmiditan is a highly lipophilic molecule and can actively penetrate the blood-brain barrier. The mechanism of action of the ditans are primarily neuronal without evidence of vasoactive effects. Triptans bind non-selectively 
to 5-HT1B and 5-HT1D receptors, causing direct vascular vasoconstriction. In contrast to tryptans, lasmitidan selectively binds to 5-HT1F receptors that act on the trigeminal system without causing vasoconstriction due to its low affinity for 5-HT1B receptors. Therefore, lasmitidan lacks vasoconstrictor activity and thus can be used for patients with relative contraindications to tryptans due to cardiovascular risk factors. By working just on the 5-HT1F receptors and not on the 5-HT1B, the ditans avoid causing any vasoconstriction. The 5-HT1F effects are similar to the 5-HT1D receptor effects. You can locate where the ditans work in the orange colored rectangle at the 5-HT1F receptor on the nerve ending. Ditans bind to 5-HT1F receptors. As a result, they inhibit the release of vasoactive peptides, thus preventing CGRP from causing pain, vasodilation, and inflammation. Also note that the ditans do not activate the 5-HT1B receptors, so no vasoconstriction occurs. At present, there is only one ditan on the market, lasmiditan, or Rayval. Note that the onset of lasmiditan is 30 minutes, which is slightly faster than the GPATs. The initial dose of lasmiditan is 50 or 100 milligrams. Note that taking a second dose for the same migraine attack has not been shown to be effective. With subsequent attacks, the dose may be increased to 100 or 200 milligrams as needed but no more than one dose should be taken in a 24-hour period. What about the efficacy of the ditans? In clinical trials, the percentage of patients that were free of migraine pain at two hours post-dose ranged from 28 to 38% for lasmiditan compared to 15 to 21% for those taking placebo. This compares to an efficacy for the GPATs of about 20 to 22%. Adverse effects of ditans. There are frequent reports of adverse effects with lasmiditan. Between 25 to 39% of patients receiving lasmiditan reported adverse effects. The most common adverse event associated with lasmiditan was dizziness, 9 to 17% versus 3% placebo. Dizziness with lasmiditan is dose dependent and largely mild to moderate in severity with a median duration of 1.5 to 2 hours. Other relatively frequent adverse events are paresthesias, sedation, fatigue, and nausea. A special warning is related to driving. Lasmiditan is associated with driving impairment and an inability to assess one's driving competence. The drug can have a sedative effect and cause dizziness which may significantly impair driving, so patients should not drive a motor vehicle, operate machinery, or engage in potentially hazardous activities for at least eight hours after each dose. This strong warning may limit the broad use of lasmiditan. Drug interactions. Alcohol or other CNS depressants. Lasmiditan can cause additive CNS depression and should not be used in combination with alcohol or CNS depressant drugs. Serotonin syndrome. An increased risk of developing serotonin syndrome may occur when lasmiditan is co-administered with serotonergic drugs such as SSRIs, SNRIs, tricyclic antidepressants, and monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Over-the-counter medications such as dextromethorphan, or herbal supplements such as St. John's wort can increase serotonin and may also increase the risk of serotonin syndrome when combined with lasmiditan. Place in therapy. The advantage of using lasmiditan is that it lacks vasoconstrictor effects such as those seen in tryptans 
and thus offers a suitable alternative to triptans for those patients with cardiovascular disease. It can also be considered for patients who have contraindications or inadequate response to triptan or GPAN use and whose migraine onset occurs in the evenings. Overall, lasminitan has good efficacy, but it is associated with more adverse events than triptans or GPANs at all doses due to a high incidence of dizziness and sedation. Triptans appear to be more efficacious than the newer migraine drugs, but with similar or poorer tolerability than GPANs. Now let's go over the key points for the acute treatment of migraine headaches. An oral OTC analgesic, such as an NSAID, is often sufficient for treatment of mild to moderate migraine pain. Use of opioid-containing products or barbiturates for migraine treatment is not recommended due to adverse effects and the risk of dependency. A tryptin is the drug of choice for moderate to severe migraine pain in most patients who do not have vascular disease. Intranasal tryptin formulations are faster acting than oral tryptins. Subcutaneous sumatryptin is the most effective tryptin formulation, but it causes the most adverse effects. CGRP receptor antagonists called GPANTS and the 5-HT1F receptor agonist lasmitidan appear to be less effective than tryptins but they can be used in patients with vascular disease. Now let's go over a treatment algorithm for the acute treatment of migraine headaches. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, should be considered first-line medications for the treatment of mild to moderate migraine attacks. Antiemetic agents may be offered as adjunctive therapy in patients with attacks accompanied by nausea or vomiting. If NSAIDs are contraindicated, acetaminophen can be given. If NSAIDs do not provide adequate pain relief or for moderate to severe migraines, the patient should be offered an oral tryptin. If an oral tryptin provides no pain relief, using another tryptin drug should be tried. Combination therapy with naproxen can also be offered to patients who have inadequate pain relief with one tryptin. If oral tryptins cannot be ingested because of vomiting, or if headache intensity peaks rapidly, subcutaneous sumatryptin may be tried. Dietans and GPANTS may be considered for patients in whom NSAIDs and all available tryptins are ineffective have unacceptable side effect profiles, or are contraindicated due to vascular disease. Summary. In part 2b, we describe the mechanism of action, main side effects, key drug interactions, dosages, and effectiveness of the following groups of drugs used in the acute treatment of migraines, GPANTS and DITANTS and we created a treatment algorithm for the acute management of migraine headaches. What's up next? In part three of this three-part series on migraine headaches, we will learn all about the medications and treatments used to prevent migraines. So stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to watch this installment of the Farm Easy Tutor. I hope you learned something that you could use at school or in practice. If you would like to continue to see more of these types of tutorials on YouTube, please make sure to click on the black subscribe button below to change it to the word subscribed. Also, if you like this video, I would appreciate it if you can click on the thumbs up icon below to change the color to black. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to add them in the comments section below or share this site with someone else. Stay tuned to the Farm Easy Tutor channel for more lectures in the upcoming weeks. So until next time, remember to take it easy.